reset group in the early 60s. Richie Vetter was captain of Australia and the great Don Rabin said to him when he was chairman of the selectors, we, we, need to, we need to freshen the game up at a different period and we'll select players who play with flair and adventure and if they don't necessarily do as well as they would like, we'll look upon them kindly for the way that they play the game. Australia picked an attacking side when the West Indies came in 60-61 and the West Indies typically had their own attacking side under the leadership of the great modern builder of West Indies cricket, Sir Frank Worrell. Some of the most extraordinary figures of cricket played in that series. Um, the tie test was in Brisbane and if it wasn't the greatest test match of all time, it was certainly one of the two or three greatest test matches of all time. Then in 1963 in Lords, another famous test match took place also involving the West Indians, a match that England managed to draw, a match with Colin Cowley had with the broken arm, a match when Ryan Close fended off everything that came his way, the match when Ted Dexter played strokes against fast bowling that people barely believed were possible. Some of the protagonists in those great matches are here tonight. And if you haven't seen them in action, we can get a feel for them on the screen now. Garfield Sobers, captain of West Indies, the greatest all-round cricketer in the world. Who's the greatest cricketer on earth? Oh, and he's bowling. Australia has lost two wickets for a meagre seven runs as Wesley Hall bowls to O'Neill. And now Hall comes charging in to capture another vital wicket. Neil Harvey snicks and Sobers takes a brilliant catch. Fast left-hander Alan Davidson is Australia's number one pace bowler. He's also the world's number one all-rounder. But it's his bowling England has to fear. His nagging accuracy, control of pace and ability to swerve the ball. In last winter's series against the West Indies, Davidson took 33 wickets. He was Australia's match winner. And he's out. Clean bowl by Griffith. Salem out for seven. England all out. 296 and West Indies need the tremendous total of one to win. So there are Dexter Bell by Griffith. One of the most underrated cricketers, and there's no reason why he should be. He took his test match wickets at 20.5. He was an all-round cricketer who stunned the world with his left arm swing, his batting, and his all-round one of the ladies and gentlemen from Australia, Alan Davidson. And on the subject of left arm fast bowling, Stroke play and close catching. One who had they both covered, there weren't any. Sir Garfield Sobers. I think the footage was painfully unfair. When I had a look at it when we arrived, um, I, I, I'm sure the plan wasn't for us to see Ted getting bowled out, because we all know that, that there was a bit more to Ted than that. One of the great players of all time against the fast bowlers, indeed against anybody. Ted next up. Entirely wrong to separate them. Wes Hall and Charlie Griffith. Did you two grow up knowing each other? Did you both fast against each other or together as boys? Did you grow fast as young men? Were you boys playing on the beach or a local club cricket? Did you know each other at school? Why are you in my 40s? <laughs> you have to talk about Sam. Weeks ago, so I found them for you. Now, I saw in Charlie Griffith because we came along in the 50s, into the 60s. But I wondered if you knew each other when you were young men. No, I, I, I met, um, I would say probably unfortunately, that I met Wes when I played for Barbados in 1959. And we all played together at the same time. That that's when I met Wes. And from then, we were, I would say we were like brothers from then. But uh, we, never, we never see eye to eye with each other on certain occasions, but when it comes to cricket, we do. <laughs> I, I imagine he was a useful foil for you. He bounced off each other pretty well, Wes. Oh, yeah, I think in 1963, um, he got all the way in, so I was I just spent a lot with him, you know. So, uh, we, we weren't, um, I did not know Charlie at all, and, um, well, we lived. 
not very close together. My brother and sister are very small enemies, you know. So what happened is that um, I, I started bowling fast when I was 18 and a half years old. So I would not have played against Charlie. I played against Larry um, at the tender age of about 11 or so. Well, I didn't play against. I, I just made up the team while he didn't play star. At 11, I think he would be a superstar under construction. <laughs> Gary, you, um, the, these guys were, were obviously terrorizing club cricket. What's often forgotten is that, as in so many other countries in the world, but really specifically in the Caribbean, club cricket is what it's all about. You've got a local game, and you can play on a Sunday, Saturday afternoon against Wes and Charlie. Yeah, well, you know, club um, cricket was very important, and as in our is, you know, we learned to play all types of games. I think that we're probably the only island or the only country in the world that played all types of cricket. We played what you call marble cricket, we played tennis ball cricket, and we played all of these games. So we had a chance to play against all of these fellows. And Barbados um, club cricket was as strong as test cricket. I mean, we came up like New South like Australia, because in Australia, the club cricket there was very, very strong. And also the um, state cricket, like our intercolonial cricket, as it was called in those days. So we came up under these conditions and we learned. And um, as you know, when I started my career, I started as an orthodox half time spinner. You know, but then when um, Charlie and Wales they faltered, I had to take over and go to the <laughs> My life was sports in general, and cricket was the number one because in those days, cricket was the only sport that would take you as a young fellow who was who came from a very humble background, would give you an opportunity to travel and see the world. And this was our incentives. If you can play cricket well, you try to develop, develop it to the highest. That's so why you would have the opportunity of playing for Barbados which was very strong. If you got into the Barbados team, you knew that the another step was not far away. The West Indies were just around the corner. So this is how we started. Now, you, you were recently inducted into the ICC Hall of Fame, a, a, a spectacular achievement. Um, you, you always swung the ball. We talk a lot, and you and I have spoken in the past, about the land of swing in the modern game. Um, there's an art to bowl the ball fast, and they just swing. Uh, you wouldn't believe this, but I was a, an off spinner. I came on and played against Richie Benno. Yeah, but played against Richie Benno when he was 14, I was 15. He was representing Sydney schools, and I was representing country schools. And I bowled those, and an uncle got actually out in the batting in club cricket in Sydney in his younger days with Bill Brown. Uh, he was the captain of our side, and this particular day he, we were playing a final of our competition in the country town, and he said, will you buy me a couple of quick ones? And he gave me a new composition ball, and I came up, and the thing swung a foot and knocked into a big out first ball. And I thought, gee, what a change, I'd get hit for six first ball. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, I didn't come up with about three balls later, I'll do exactly the same again. I'm holy hell, this is this is great the game I've ever played. And, and that's how it came about. But I, I did have a natural action. I've never been coached a day in my life. And and I think in the many respects, to watch this genius on my left, he was just a natural. You know, you watch West Hall bowl, the most beautiful action. And and these are the things that People in our time, I, I don't think, you know, today in Australia we've got 13 people looking after 11 players. And, uh, <laughs> and the beautiful part was when we played, Mark, you know, in fact, you just did things and it, it's an amazing thing, but I still believe I was born with an enormous gift. and. I'm not the genius that on my left, but I tell you what, I, I think I was useful. And, <laughs> and, 
I want to wait to see a couple of fast bowlers up the end there too, because we made captains famous. <laughs> Is that, a, is that a fair comment, Ted? Was, was having a fast bowler on his side the thing that every captain wanted? I can't resist this opportunity to just tell one story, particularly about Charlie. This is my great friend, dear, unfortunately not with us anymore, Kenny Barrington. And we were, we were one, two down in the series in 63. We went to the Oval. Kenny Barrington came in the dressing room and said, I'm fed up with all this ducking and diving. I'm going to hook these guys. <laughs> so we said, really, Kenny? Oh, we're looking forward to seeing you do it. I got out early. In goes Kenny. So we're all on the balcony watching. Charlie Bowles, a short one. Kenny smacks it to the lake to the boundary. Charlie comes and stares at him. Next ball, he's halfway through the hook shot, gets a top edge, flies over one bounce, smashes into the side screen, and Kenny goes a little white. <laughs> the next ball, I think, now what happens? Kenny's halfway through a pull stroke, and the ball hits him, the Yorker hits him smack on the toe. <laughs> it cleans out leg some. Clean out middle stump. Kenny throws his bat away. He's now taking off his gloves. He's hopping on one foot, trying to get hold of his toe. <laughs> so eventually, he has to go pick up his bat, pick up his gloves, and walks off. And we're waiting for him in the dressing room. <laughs> so nobody says a word. Kenny sits down. Perhaps that wasn't a very good idea. <laughs> Wes, you, Wes you, you, you've had this amazing legacy of fast bowling in the Caribbean, but even both within the Caribbean and outside, who's the best you've seen? Who's the one fast bowler you picked to have in your team or any other? Well, uh, you know, in the 1980s, you had so many fast bowlers and they're, they're coming at you in fours, so it's rather um, disconcerting for the batsman. And uh, <laughs> therefore, you were able to, you know, hold in uh, Croft, uh, Roberts, you know, Walsh came later. They, they were really very good. But I think as a destroyer, I think Charlie Wolf was really uh, that type of destroyer. As you look at the snow, I think it must be very obvious to everyone that it is really a truism, you know, that, you know, and as far as fast bowlers go, I would say that the human body was not designed for fast bowling. <laughs> as you say, so you all you know that is true. Uh, I have to tell Big Bird Diana, um, Walsh, um, Croft, and indeed, um, Robert's well, you know about Robert's ready. He, he, he's had an operation on both knees, so he knows about it. Well, all those fellows who are now only 50 and, you know, do quite well as far as walking is concerned. <laughs> I want to tell them that they will be like this one these days. Okay? <laughs> the human body is not designed for fast walking, that's for sure. But I would just like to say also that, you know, the great thing about cricket, as far as I'm concerned, is you make so many friends. I mean, to say, I remember wives, all the wives, they just hated us, um, you know, on the field playing. But um, off the field, they were quite good. For instance, Bob Simpson, I remember once I was going against him, and as soon as I got to deliver the ball, he, he turned away. And the emperor said, what is it, Mr. Simpson? He says, I want this sexually move to the left. And in those days, you know, it wasn't a push button technology, so you had to get eight men to push it right over. And then I started to go again. When I got there, he pulled it out again. And what is it now, Mr. Simpson? He said, I want it back to the right. <laughs> so I came up again the third time, and I ran. And when I got here, he stopped me again. And I <laughs> you know, he was 
discombobulated, ready to say. He said, what is it? Now this is it. He said, listen, I want it now pushed between me and that half <laughs> I suppose, I suppose uh, there was half a chance that Wes would steal the show. So Gary Sobers, Alan Dex, 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 Dex